In this video, we are going to discuss the complex dot product. As you might have guessed, this is not so complex, actually. It's not so complicated. All we are going to do is compute the dot product where one or both of the vectors is complex valued. So let's see what that looks like. Here you see an example of two three element vectors or three dimensional vectors. And one of them is purely real valued. This is not a complex valued vector. There are no imaginary parts here. And here we have a complex valued vector. So every element contains a real part and an imaginary part. So how do we compute the dot product between these two vectors? Well, it turns out it's really simple. It's exactly the same thing as the regular dot product. You just do element-wise multiplication and then sum. Now, if you're doing this by hand, which in general is not something that I recommend, you do have to be a little bit mindful. It gets a little bit trickier because you have to keep track of the algebra. So for example, you know, this is two and then eight i, right? Because you multiply two by the real part and two by the imaginary part. But otherwise, it's not fundamentally any different. And then this can be reduced to the single complex number 14 plus 16 i. So we get the 14 from the 2 and the 12, and we get the 16 i from the uh, 8 i and the 8 i over here. So complex value dot product is exactly the same as the real value dot product. You just have to keep track of all of these complex numbers and imaginary operators. Now, here's the cool part about complex dot products. When you have a real value dot product, it's a thing that lives on the real axis. And so a real value dot product has essentially two pieces of information that we can extract. One is the magnitude, which is the distance away from zero. So here that might be, you know, four and a half or whatever this magnitude is. And the other piece of information would be the sign, which is whether it's to the left or to the right of zero or whether it's exactly equal to zero. Okay, so not so much information in the real value dot product, but when we get to the complex value dot product, we can get a lot more information packed into that one complex dot product. Just like what I explained several videos ago about how you can embed or encode a lot more information into complex numbers compared to just real valued numbers. Okay, and so some of this is gonna be a little bit of a review. So if we want to extract the length of this line, which is the distance of this complex number away from the origin, then the way to do that is to think about the Pythagorean theorem. And we think about this line that goes from the complex dot product to the origin as being the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And this is the one leg, and this is the other leg, and this is a right angle, of course. So there's a couple of different ways we can compute this. We can say the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and then the square root of that. So that would give us five. And again, you have to be mindful that what you're squaring here is the imaginary part, not the imaginary number. So you don't say four i squared, that would give you minus 16. That's not the correct answer. The i part here is used to indicate that we're looking on the imaginary axis. Otherwise, what we care about is the distance along the imaginary axis, which is the number four, the real number four. Okay, so this is one method. Uh, we can also express that same concept this way. So the real part of the complex number squared plus the imaginary part of the complex number squared and then the square root of that. That is called the absolute value of the uh, complex number or the magnitude of the complex number. And it's often indicated using these vertical lines surrounding the complex number. Okay, and then you also saw in a, a previous video when I introduced complex numbers that we can also multiply this complex dot product by its complex conjugate. And in that video, I indicated the complex conjugate using a bar over the complex number. And here I'm using an asterisk in the superscript. So both representations are used, uh, or notations, I should say.
So, and then we want the square root of that because you'll remember that from a few videos ago when I introduced this concept of multiplying a, a complex number by its complex conjugate, that essentially works out to be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So then the absolute value or the distance away from the origin would be the square root of that. Okay, so that is one quantity that we can encode in the complex dot product. Another one is this angle, which is also sometimes called the phase. It's also sometimes called the argument of the complex number, although I think that's a bit of an old fashioned term. So how do we compute this phase angle? Well, to do this, we call back on our trigonometry knowledge, which you might have forgotten after you left high school. But essentially there are these uh, laws for the uh, sine and cosine and tangent of this angle as ratios of the hypotenuse and the opposite side and the adjacent side. So anyway, it turns out that the tangent of this angle is equal to the ratio of the imaginary part to the real part. So in this case, with this particular example, you could say that the tangent of this angle is equal to 4 divided by 3. Again, it's not 4i divided by 3 because we want the imaginary part, not the imaginary number. And therefore, to get this angle, we just have to invert the tangent operation and then of course apply it to the right-hand side of the equation as well. So we get the arctangent, uh, or the a tan, or the inverse tangent of the imaginary part over the real part equals the angle, and this would give us the angle in radians. So to sum up this video, Computing a complex dot product is exactly the same operation. It's the same procedure as computing the real value dot product, except that the result is going to be a complex number instead of a real number. And from that complex dot product, from that complex result, we can extract several pieces of information. But the two that we are going to be most interested in are the magnitude, which is the distance from the origin, and the angle, which is this uh, or the phase, I should say, which is this angle relative to the positive real axis.